from Cummins and Vortman. I have heard Bernard speaking before. They're a two-person practice and who actually generate everything through BIM. And I think they're an, ex an excellent role model of how to, uh, how to use BIM as a productivity tool. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, as you, you've just uh, heard, uh, my name is Robert Cummins, and um, uh, we, we're a relatively small practice, and um, we set up uh, about five years ago in uh, two, late 2005, and um, I suppose we're physically based in uh, Tipperary and Dublin, um, but uh, we've carried out work right around the country and um, uh, internationally. And uh, I suppose we, we set out to um, specialize in, I suppose, uh, uh, sustainable architecture and urban design. Um, and uh, we, we, we wanted to come at it in a slightly different direction and cater for I suppose at the time the changing needs of the Irish market and I suppose looking to the future, uh, we may not be able to predict the future but um, we can at least try to move in, in, in a direction that we feel would be beneficial. Um, we, uh, we have, um, or we, we're very much uh, te technology led and um, I suppose uh, when, we, when we went to uh, set up the practice, we had to decide a number of things. And I suppose being an architectural practice, what technology we were going to use uh, was uh, of critical importance. And um, uh, myself and Bernard had over the years come through uh, quite uh, an interesting journey in terms of what way we had carried out work and what packages we'd used in terms of uh, technology. And um, I suppose that gave us a good uh, foundation for uh, deciding what way we wanted to uh, take the practice and how, uh, how we'd set that up. And um, uh, I suppose what we what we uh, selected took into account, I suppose, the type of uh, client base uh, that we hope to have, and uh, I suppose what what we have uh, today, which is a mix of private, commercial, and uh, public sector uh, sector work. So I'll just hand you over to Bernard now for a couple of minutes, and he'll just go through how uh, the how uh, BIM uh, was selected and what. Good morning, everybody. I'm Bernard. Some of you may already know me from a past lecture. So let me um, swiftly move to the next slide. Basically, um, I'm going to delve first into the, the aspect of a working tool that everybody uses in a practice. And for us, the choice of a working tool is absolutely critical because it influences the way you work every single day. It is really the medium par excellence to visualize and communicate your abstract concepts you know, to your teammates, clients, and everybody involved in the construction process. The more familiar a tool is, as you can see, the less restrictions it imposes on your creativity. And as we see the tool, there are really main three elements of the tool that are interdependent. You have the user, the software, and the hardware. And we believe that every single aspect of these three has to be perfect to work in harmony. So, <clears throat> as Professor James was saying this morning, um, when he said it so eloquently this morning, apologies, um, real efficiency can be maintained if we choose to upgrade, learn, and adapt to follow you know, the evolution of technology. So basically, Robert and myself evolved, as he was saying earlier, like from a pencil-based uh, drawing in college in the uh, early 90s to uh, 2D packages, which we still consider as um, um, it's like more like a digitized drawing board 
but really on a way more smaller screen actually so the actually interaction with the tool may not be optimal so basically as well early on we moved on to the 3d package like MacroStation that was actually um, being used in uh, UCD at the time so we went quite far in the usage of that um, that tool now when we set up a practice like we were both working on a separate uh, companies and we we're both using Graphisoft um, Archicad but we went actually back and to reassess the market and to see like what best tool was available you know to build our company upon so we set us ourselves key objectives. It has a tool we're going to, to use, the CAT package. It had to improve the work efficiency. It had to take advantage of all the automation uh, technology. It had to deliver on accuracy and quality control. And it has to dramatically improve the communication process between all the parties involved. So as we knew Archicad quite well, we went to analyze all different packages and we couldn't really find, at the time, that was in 2005, we couldn't really find any other package that would compete with the virtual building concept of Graphisoft. At the time, it was really innovative and industry-leading. Uh, it was conceived from the start as a BIM tool, and also it was an object-based three-dimensional design environment, which we felt quite at home with. We could really deal every single aspect of our project within that package. So now we're going to uh, move to the next um, a few slides. Uh, Robert is again going to introduce a few case studies, architectural case studies uh, that will show then the, the main <coughs> or main usage of BIM, and I will then follow then with a few urban design um, projects. So. Okay. Um, the first uh, project I'll just uh, go through with you was um, two residential units in uh, Baldoyle here in Dublin. And the objective was to build uh, two low energy dwellings. Um, the reason we're showing you this is that um, there was a few complications in the project in that um, uh, the dwellings were for uh, our client and his wife and family and uh, their, the other house was for their daughter and her family. Um, so it, it, often it's, it's hard enough to please one client, especially at domestic level, um, but two clients uh, uh, well, made it even more interesting. So I suppose uh, 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 BIM uh, helped us greatly here in the design process. Uh, I suppose if we were to contrast it doing it in, in, in 2D because there were quite a few changes during the design. The clients were found it particularly difficult to visualize something that wasn't there. So um, uh, BIM ha helped us ha maintain a streamlined design process and yet cater for, for, for numerous changes a a a along the way. And um, with the two separate clients, uh, you know, they were able to visualize what was going to happen and, uh, you know, within a reasonable length of time, we, we were able to move forward to the, the, the planning stage. And uh, the planning stage uh, proved to be quite interesting as well. Um, it was, uh, the site is on the coast road in Baldoyle and uh, was considered quite sensitive from a planning point of view and um, we had to uh, go through an extended planning process more to do with the, the, the visual uh, aspects of what the, the, the building was going to do there uh, rather than, the, the, than uh, general uh, or other planning matters. Um, but again, it helped greatly having the BIM model because we were quickly able to make the, the changes or show alternatives to the planning authority and also then quickly show uh, to the clients the impact on them so that they could give us an instruction whether to, to proceed or not. Um, and then uh, the, the, the project, thankfully we, we got through the planning and the project moved then on to tender uh, stage and again we were able to continue with our model uh, we were able to add in um, the 
next level of detail required to produce tender documentation. And um, again, the clients, because we had the model, we were, you know, there can be subtle changes when, when you go to this stage. Because we had the model all along, those were minimized, and then the client was able to see what was happening uh, all along the way. And um, that allowed us then to, again, go, uh, go to site. Uh, at the time, it was uh, quite easy to interact with, uh, again, the, the, the contractors and uh, engineers. While I suppose, you know, they weren't using a BIM package, uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, consider that to be an issue to, to discourage a, a practice from, from going with BIM because, again, if there's a different section of the building or something like that that needs to be looked at or a particular person wants the information on, you can quickly generate it and, and issue it.